battery. Charge controller or solenoid, and then switch panel of some sort with some way to monitor like state of charge for the battery. Let's talk power. Not horsepower, electronics. The lights, fridge, chargers, and other things that make camp such a better experience. I've got Ren and Chuck with me here, and we're gonna talk through everything you need to know about how to build your basic power system. For a complete list of questions and answers, you can navigate this video with the chapters below. You typically start with a power management system by talking about what are some of the devices and accessories that you're gonna have on your vehicle, or what? I would say the first thing is, are you running a fridge or not? That's gonna probably be your biggest power draw. Um, and then are you going to be moving every day or do you want to stay in the same spot, you know, for more than one day? And that's going to kind of lead us towards if you need solar or not. Yeah, basically what Rin said, what your draws are going to be, you know what I mean? And what really you already have. But do you think the foundation of it is like understanding if people are going to be moving, if they're going to be stationary, stuff like that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. We're starting with a basic system to get somebody kind of entry level into having uh, a power system to manage a fridge. A fridge is a very popular accessory for a vehicle, right? Uh, maybe some lights and you know, things like that. To get yourself in a basic system that maybe you're not gonna be moving around with, uh, what are some things to consider? I would say like a typical go-to if somebody's gonna be running a fridge, uh, small camp lights and accessories, charging their phones, not charging an, or not running an inverter. Um, usually 100 amp hours of lithium is gonna be a nice setup. Um, we get a lot of people that ask us about running Goal Zero or other power packs. And like the biggest advantage of running a 100 amp hour lithium versus the power pack is going to be the rate that you can charge it off an alternator. Like obviously you need a solar panel, you need a battery of some kind, and then some kind of controller. So what is a BCDC? Explain a charge controller. It's a DC to DC charger. So instead of just being uh, like a solenoid that's gonna throw whatever the alternator is producing, it's gonna change the voltage and the amperage going to the battery to properly charge that type of battery. So the BCDC will target your house battery, which is gonna be like your camping battery. It's gonna be charging that off of your starting battery. Yeah. Um, and then it's gonna have an input that you can add solar later on to that as well. Portable power system, power units that have an inverter, that have the charge controller in there, that's designed as really a plug, plug and play, right? But what is kind of the drawback of some of these portable powder, battery packs? I think it's charge time. Like they have ample storage in a way. So you can power things with them, your fridge, your phone, but they don't recharge typically fast enough. Anything that can charge off a cigarette lighter is only charging at 10 amps max. So if it's a hundred amp hour capacity, you know, it's 10 hours of your vehicle running, you know, to bring that thing back up from zero. Surge protection and, and fuses and things like that. I think that's kind of some area there where people don't understand where they need to provide the protection in line um, between solar, between the car and the battery, between the battery and the accessories. Yeah, I mean, I would say like, the safest thing is follow the instruction manual for the charge controller you're using. Because uh, that's gonna show fuse locations, fuse sizes. Um, and then if you're charging, or if you're bringing loads off of your house battery, that can all be calculated. Blue C has a good app for that. That'll tell you even wire gauge that you need to run for what amps, you know, for loads and at what distance. Mm -hmm. How do I plug up and manage all of my accessories? Fuse block would be great for stuff that doesn't need to be switched. Okay. So constants, like a fridge that has like a switch built into it. And then items like lights and cigarette chargers and stuff like that are nice to do on a switched unit. Um, something like either a blue C deck panel or like a red arc, red vision setup is like a nice alternative. What about battery location? Like, do you put it in your camper? Do you put it in your truck? Do you put it under the hood? You have to take that into consideration because we talk about 100 amp hour batteries. Usually 100 amp hour batteries are larger than your standard like group 34 or group 35 battery. So they don't always fit underneath the hood where people want them to go. So if you're like, hey, I want to take this larger battery, then you have to have a place to put it, which that might not be practical. You I mean like you might have a Tacoma and you're like, all I have is underneath the hood. Or if you have a Wrangler then you need like a Genesis dual battery where they're right next to each other and they're smaller 40 amp hour batteries. Lithium batteries are gonna be a lot happier where you are because you're always gonna be in a much more temperature control environment than under the hood, whether it be cold or hot. Um, and a lot of them have a min and max temperature range. That's a low range, meaning like it's not going to allow you to charge it because that'll 
degenerate the battery, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah. especially in winter. So yeah. in winter, it's important to keep basically lithium batteries above freezing. Mm -hmm. Some of them are like 40 degrees Fahrenheit that I need to be above. Um, but their charge and their discharge rates are going to be drastically different when they're outside of that. So keeping those within that range is really important. Do you know anything or can you speak to these self-heating lithium batteries at all? Most self-heating batteries need to see at least a couple amps of current coming through to self-charge, while most battery management systems see a temperature and won't throw charge at it. There's a couple ways that we play with red arcs to kind of get around that and kind of trick the red arc into throwing some amperage at the battery so the battery can self-heat. Um, but as far as like a really clear off-the-shelf solution, it is a little bit difficult. What are some of the things that people often change from their power system that they currently have? We've gone from like deep cycle AGM style batteries to lithium um, because lithium's come down so much in cost. You know, 10 years ago, lithium battery was, you know, crazy money, three, four grand. Now, um, I mean, from an Amazon battery in the threes to a quality battery, you know, in the nines, like it's still very affordable compared to an AGM. Exactly, and like you said, when you mentioned a camper, now, space isn't a yeah. premium. You're like, hey, I have a whole bed in my truck. We can put big batteries back there. We don't have to squeeze them under the hood. So that opens up a whole nother world. So what about a winch? Does this is something that needs to be installed on what we're calling um, like a house battery that runs my accessories? Uh, no, it yeah. would be uh, connected to your starting battery. Most lithiums are only 100 to 200 amp discharge, which is only gonna be you know, not enough for a winch to begin with. And your replenishment is only going to be, you know, 25 to 50 amps, depending on what kind of red arc you have. So it would take you a lot longer where your starting battery is going to charge directly off the alternator. So it's going to replenish a lot quicker. When we talk uh, amp hours, what does that mean? The amps. So if you're running a 100 amp hour battery, let's say about 80 of that is what you really want to be using. If you're running a 8 amp load, to keep it simple, you would have 10 hours at that discharge. Makes sense. Um, so basically calculating what loads you're going to be running. Uh, and then when you're going to be running those loads, so a fridge being it's going to run most of the time, lights would only be at camp, charging your phone's probably only going to be at night. So kind of calculating what your loads are going to be, getting how many amp hours you're going to be basically using, and then how you're going to replenish that. So we've talked a lot about bits and pieces for the power system, um, but we want to recap this so it's simple for people to understand. I've got a basic power management need for my vehicle. I need a fridge. I need to power some accessories, maybe with a USB, and I need some switches. What is the system that I need to install for my truck? Battery, charge controller or solenoid, and then switch panel of some sort with some way to monitor like state of charge for the battery. I think next time we see Chuck and Ren, we're gonna talk a little bit about solar, uh, maybe some portable solutions for panels, uh, fixed mount, uh, flat mount. Make sure you like, subscribe, smash that bell for notifications, and we'll catch you later.